The Bonfire of the Vanities is a 1987 novel by Tom Wolfe, and it was made into a movie in 1990 starring Tom Hanks, Bruce Willis, and Melanie Griffith. The story centers around the character of Sherman McCoy, who's played by Tom Hanks in the film. He's a big shot Bond trader on Wall Street, a master of the universe, he calls himself. He lives in a luxury apartment with a beautiful wife and daughter, and he has a side chick named Maria, played by Griffith in the movie, who he cheats on his wife with regularly. So a stand-up guy that you're really rooting for. One night, while driving Maria home from the airport, he takes a wrong turn and ends up in a bad part of New York City. He has to get out of his car at one point and encounters a couple of young black men who frighten him. A scuffle ensues, McCoy jumps in his car, and Maria drives off, but not before swiping one of the guys, a young honor student named Henry Lamb. That causes him to go into a coma. That sets off a nightmarish sequence of events for McCoy. He's eventually arrested and charged with hit and run, and the whole thing makes its way into the newspapers, this big sensationalized news story first reported by reporter Peter Fallow, who is played by Bruce Willis in the film. Now, talking about the book specifically, I did find the characters in the novel pretty interesting. None of them are likable. They're all actually pretty bad people, but they are fleshed out and complex characters. There's a lot of depth to them, especially McCoy and the assistant district attorney, a character named Larry Kramer. Kramer is a much bigger character in the book than he is in the film. I would argue he's maybe the second or third biggest character in the book after McCoy and Maria. But in the film, he's kind of just a side character. The story involves a lot of racial tensions and, and politics, which was interesting to read in 2024, because this book having been written in 1987 involves a lot of the same conversations about race that we're still having today. Getting to the movie now, it's not a very well-reviewed movie for, I think, many different reasons, but I would say my biggest gripe with the film is that I think the casting was bad. I do actually think that the movie would have been better if Bruce Willis and Tom Hanks were swapped, their character roles were swapped. I think Willis would have been a better Sherman McCoy and Hanks would have been a better Peter Fallow. Those roles, I think, just fit their personalities better. I, I thought Willis, in particular, was horribly miscast. First of all, in the book, Peter Fallow is British, and that's a, that's a big part of his character's personality, is his Britishness and his disdain for Americans. He's just a regular American in the movie, and he, they actually make him a, just a dumb party boy drunk in the movie, which there are elements of that to his character in the book, but it's kind of brought to an 11 in the film. The first opening shot of the film is this long tracking shot of him getting out of a limo to give a speech and he's just tanked, which is a scene that does not appear in the book. And I thought it was a strange choice to bookend the film with Fallow's character. I mean, this, the story is not about Peter Fallow I didn't care for the, the music in the film. I didn't think it fit the mood. The Henry Lamb in the movie, in my opinion, was not representative of the, the boyish, wide-eyed, scared Henry Lamb that's described in the book. Another issue I had with the film is, so Morgan Freeman plays the judge, and the, the judge in the book is a very boisterous, loud, angry judge who's constantly yelling at lawyers and uh, people in the courtroom and they just make Freeman's judge very unprofessional in my opinion. Now listen to me you son of a bitch and you're gonna kiss my ass and thank me that I didn't put you away for 25 years. Quick side note, F. Murray Abraham in his role as the district attorney I thought was excellent. I thought he gave the best performance of any of the actors in the film and provided the most humor as well. A few of the more noticeable differences between the book and the film. There's a scene in the film where, where Fallow has a, a change of heart about how he has been reporting on this story about McCoy. He's on a train with McCoy. McCoy is not aware of who he is. Fallow starts having some sympathy for McCoy in this situation. And that is kind of an integral part of the film because it 
significantly alters the character of Fallow having grown through this experience and, and having a change of heart. In the book, Fallow never feels badly about how he's written the story and he never has a, a solo conversation with McCoy. Because of this change of heart, Fallow is the one who actually ends up providing the audio tape to the judge that essentially proves McCoy's innocence. That tape is not provided by Fallow in the book. McCoy is the one who thinks of it. Similar endings, but different set of circumstances on, on how you get there. And there is a very memorable scene in the film, probably the most memorable scene in the whole movie, where Sherman McCoy is, is they're having a party at his apartment and he's starting to go crazy because he's facing potentially going to prison. And he just gets a shotgun out of a closet and starts shooting up his apartment. He doesn't kill anybody, but he shoots at the walls and the ceilings and scares everybody out because he wants them to get out of his apartment. It's a crazy scene, quite alarming to watch because I was like, what is going on here? This, this is not in the book at all. There's also a heartfelt scene between Sherman McCoy and his, his father in the film that does not take place in the book. His dad is an afterthought of a character in the book, but there's towards the end of the film where he breaks down about what's happening and his father embraces him. And it's a, you know, it's a touching scene, but again, invented for the film. So as I mentioned, the case against McCoy is eventually uh, dismissed because of this new evidence. And there's this big speech given by the judge to the courtroom about right and wrong and, and all this doesn't happen in the book. In the book, after the case is dismissed, the courtroom actually erupts into chaos, and there's a small riot, essentially, and McCoy ends up punching a guy before he's shooed out of the room. So which one's better? The book, by a mile. Not even close. The book I thought was uh, quite captivating, and I was really invested in the characters and, and really interested to see how everything turned out in the end. The movie was... Uh, I don't know, just kind of meh. All right, have you read the book or seen the movie? Please let me know your thoughts on either or both in the comments below. Maybe some things that I left out of this review. Please like and subscribe. Share this video with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later.